I get more questions on Facebook, YouTube, and email about how to wire up lights and accessories on motorcycles. So in this video today, I thought I'd take some time and just go deep on the subject of how I have begun wiring up accessories and what my strategy and techniques are for doing that. I'll be showing you my wiring strategy on my 2018 Honda Goldwing. But I believe that these techniques will work on any brand motorcycle, whether it's a Can-Am Spider or even a snowmobile. You'll be able to adapt this technique to whatever you ride. I want to give you a short disclaimer right up front. I am not an electrical engineer. If you use any of these techniques to work on your own motorcycle, you do so at your own risk. But we've got a lot of ground to cover in this video, so let's get started. So why do we even need a wiring strategy in the first place? Well, this is why. Does this look familiar to you? This is what my Goldwing looked like just a couple of months ago. Wires going everywhere, connectors. I didn't know where everything went. This is Don Smith's Goldwing. You can see different connectors, different wires, and it gets kind of confusing. There just has to be a better way. Now, if you have an older motorcycle, you probably have a traditional or legacy electrical system, not a CAN bus. And this is a fuse-driven circuit system, kind of a dumb system, you might say. The nice thing is you can just tap into existing wiring without worrying too much. If you want to add another brake light or turn signal, you just tap into existing wiring. And as long as you don't overload the circuit, in which case you just blow a fuse, you pretty much don't have to worry about it. It's clunky, but it works. Most modern motorcycles today have a CAN bus electrical system, and that includes the 2018 Plus Honda Goldwing. The CAN bus system was invented by Bosch, and it's really intended for modern electrical systems. CAN bus electrical systems reduce the amount of wiring necessary, which also results in a weight reduction and smaller wiring harnesses. Now, CAN stands for Controller Area Network, and it integrates all the controllers in a network for simplified and extensive diagnostics. It's just a much more advanced system of electronics. Now, while most CAN bus systems eliminate fuses, the Goldwing does retain some fuses in the system. The thing to remember is there is a computer monitoring all of the current passing through all of the various circuits on your motorcycle with a CAN bus electrical system. And while a CAN bus system is very sophisticated, it can also be extremely sensitive. So let's say you add an accessory to a CAN bus system like you did in the old days and it causes a higher than expected current to be flowing through that circuit. The computer is going to think something's wrong and it's going to generate a fault code. It's not simply just going to blow a fuse and let you go on about your business. And it may even render your motorcycle unrideable. You may not be able to start the bike until you deal with this fault code. The whole purpose behind isolator fuse blocks and power distribution modules is to isolate this CAN bus system from accessory power draw. And to be clear, I'm referring to accessories that you add to the motorcycle that come from third-party companies. I'm not talking about things like Homelink or Honda fog lights, which do get powered through the CAN bus safely. The only way to protect the CAN bus from these added accessories is to isolate it. The isolator derives its power and distributes that power to accessories from the battery, not from the CAN bus system. The isolator almost completely bypasses the CAN bus. The power coming from the battery is delivered by the isolator through multiple circuits. While these circuits are triggered by the CAN bus, the electrical draw on the system is negligible and shouldn't cause harm. Typical circuits are brake, left turn, right turn signals, a running light, there may be a hot circuit, and an accessory or switched circuit. This graphic may help to illustrate how an isolator or power distribution module actually works. 
The isolator or power distribution module will connect directly to the battery because it will be delivering the power to your added accessories from the battery, not from the CAN bus. Now, in the case of a Honda Goldwing, generally there will be a harness provided with the isolator that will tap into your CAN bus electrical system. Now, this harness generally will connect under your seat to your saddlebag connectors on the left and the right side. But these wires and this harness is only used to trigger events within the isolator itself. So, for example, let's say you turn on your right turn signal. That trigger wire will tell the isolator to distribute power to the right turn signal circuit. But the power is coming from the battery, not from the CAN bus system. The isolator will have multiple circuits. Usually, there's a right turn signal and a left turn signal circuit. Next, you'd have a circuit for a running light. This would also include your tail lights. Then, you'll have a brake light circuit. When you apply the brakes, this circuit will become active. The hot circuit is basically a pass-through directly from the battery to whatever accessory you connect. And this would always be drawing power, even if the motorcycle is turned off. So you would use this for something like a battery tender. The accessory circuit would be a switched circuit, meaning that it's only active when the motorcycle is turned on or in accessory mode. This could be used for something like a GPS or your heated gear. If we remove the cover from the show chrome isolator fuse block, you can see the circuits that I'm referring to. Here you can see the actual terminals representing each of those circuits for left turn, right turn, running light, and brake light. Now they offer two terminals for running lights and brake lights. Every power distribution module does this a little bit differently, but the principle is the same. Now these terminals are where you would actually connect the wires from the accessories that you add to your motorcycle and those circuits will receive power directly from the battery. You'll notice that each of the circuits on this isolator also has its own ground terminal represented by the minus sign. Now we're taking a look at this isolator fuse block with the cover on, and at the very top you'll notice the 12 volt keyed power. This is what I refer to as accessory power or switched power. And next to that, you'll find the hot terminals, which would provide consistent power regardless whether the motorcycle's on or off. Next to that, you'll see the power wires. These go directly to the battery. This is where the device gets the power to distribute to your added accessories. And then on the opposite side, you can see those trigger wires I was referring to. Those connect to those trigger wires that come from the CAN bus system. The isolator or PDM will probably contain more than one ground connection. And it really doesn't matter where you connect. Ground is universal no matter which one you connect to. So here's an example of where we've connected two LEDs, one for the left turn signal, one for the right turn signal. And you can see how those wire into the isolator. The ground is common, so it really doesn't matter which ground terminal it's connected to. When you execute your turn signal on the hand control, the trigger from the CAN bus lets the isolator know to execute the right or left turn signal circuit, and it gets the power from the battery, not from the CAN bus. So let's talk about adding specific accessories. Now, electrical accessories for this example would include LED lights, GPS, heated gear, uh, battery chargers, radar detectors, etc. And many of these now come with their own plug-and-play harnesses for the Honda Goldwing. These plug-and-play harnesses are typically proprietary. So, for example, if you get accessories from SoCal Moto Gear, they're going to have their harness. If you buy lights from Goldstrike or Kuryakin, they're going to have their own harness with their own connectors, and they're proprietary. One of the most common questions I get is, can I use a plug-and-play harness from brand A with a plug-and-play harness from brand B? Because people buy accessories from different companies. 
Now, the answer is yes. These harnesses can generally be connected in series. But the problem is there's just not enough space underneath your motorcycle seat to have more than one or maybe two of these harnesses. The other consideration is plug-and-play harnesses do not protect the CAN bus. They still derive the power from the CAN bus and distribute it to their accessories. Now, this may not cause a problem in some cases, but it is still possible to overload one of these circuits using plug-and-play harnesses. As you can see in this graphic, all of the power going to the accessories, in this case lights, are coming through the CAN bus through the plug-and-play harness. So my recommendation is to completely eliminate the plug-and-play harnesses for your accessories. Cut off the proprietary connectors and wire everything directly to the isolator fuse block. Now there are a couple of exceptions to this rule. If your isolator fuse block has a plug-and-play harness, it's okay to use that. And on a gold wing, you may also need to wire your tail blazer modulators into the CAN bus system. The first thing I needed to do was decide where I wanted my accessory wires to terminate. On the left side of the bike, I decided to go kind of down toward the battery area. There's a couple of options on the left side. On the right side of the bike, my wires are going to terminate where you see this trailer isolator right now. I'm not going to use the trailer isolator because I won't need it since I have a separate isolator fuse block. I'll be cutting these wires and wiring them into my isolator fuse block. Now these wires here are coming from my trailer wiring harness. These were connected to a Rivco isolator and I cut the wires off because I really don't need that isolator. So I'm just going to wire these directly into my uh, power distribution module slash isolator. The next thing I wanted to do was establish a uniform wiring color code at the termination point. The reason is because all of the accessories have different colors for their wire schemes. I decided on these colors for my different wiring circuits. But you can use any colors on any circuits. My next task was to cut the wires from all my accessories and splice in new wires conforming to my color code. Here you can see I'm extending a left turn signal wire on the left coming from my trailer harness to my color coded yellow wire on the right hand side. I'm using this solder heat shrink butt connector, which we'll talk more about later. Here you can see I've extended the ground wire from my Muth mirrors. They use a brown wire and I'm extending it with black wire on the left. While Pathfinder LED uses a yellow wire for the right turn signal, I'm extending it with a red wire. And these are the wires from, I think these are from my Pathfinder uh, cowl lights. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure they are. I've already extended one of these wires because you can see it will fit all the way up to here, but I want these wires a little bit longer. Give me a little room to work with, and then I'll trim them all back when I need to. Now, these different wiring harnesses have different color codes. So what I'm doing is I'm using my own wire to color code everything. I'm using this blue as my running light. I'm using this red as my right turn signal. And then, of course, black I'm using as ground. But you can see here on this Pathfinder light, it's actually a white wire is the uh, running light. And it uses a yellow wire as the right turn signal but I will add to that yellow wire some red wire so that I know when I get up here to my junction which wires go to what terminals. I'm using these heat shrink butt connectors and a hot air gun. What it does is it melts the solder in the center to weld the two wires together and heat shrinks the ends. Okay, now I'm going to put all of these wires from these three different products, all these extended wires, into some heat shrink tubing just to kind of get them uniform and up to where we want them to go. 
So now you can see I've got this uh, heat shrink tubing. I'll put links to all of this products in uh, to, on Amazon that I'm using. I'm leaving myself enough wire here so that I can obviously trim everything back if I need to. I can also cut off some of this sheathing if I need to. I'm just, I'm not going to heat this yet. I'm going to wait until I get everything hooked up and wired up. First step is to get all my wires kind of in the general area that I need them. These are all the wires that come from the front of the bike. Now I'm going to work on the wires that come from the back of the bike on the right side. Then I'll work on the left side. So if we look at the wires coming from the front of the bike on the right hand side, you can see I've got them in my little uh, shrink tubing here, but I haven't shrunk it yet. I'm waiting till I get everything finished up. And what I did is I tied all the same colors together. There are three of the right turn signal lights, three ground and two of the running light. And I've done the same thing on the wires coming from the back of the bike. And now we're going to plug these in. Now we'll eventually do the same ones from the, the ones coming from the trailer. I'll do the same thing. I'll match them up as far as length, trim them back, tie them together. So it's okay to combine these into one uh, connector, not a problem. So we'll do that now. So as you can see, I've got all my wires trimmed about the same length, as you can see here, coming from all these different uh, shrink tubings. This one's a little long. I could probably add some more shrink tubing to this one. Uh, and I may do that just because I don't want those bare wires hanging out there. So I'll probably slip a little, another little sleeve of shrink tubing over that um, before I wire everything up. And then I'm going to start putting on my connectors. So now we're going to take a look at what I'm doing on the left side of the bike. Here I've got my wires coming from my mooth mirrors. I've got wires coming up from the left side for my pathfinders. And um, I think those are my cowl lights and my fog lights. Here's the mooth mirrors. Now what I did is I pulled the ground wire out of each one of these and I'm going to run it right down here. This You don't have to do this. I, I could have run it all the way back to where I'm going to tie everything else together. I chose to run the ground wires here because the ACC terminal is right there and there's a ground coming off that fuse box. So I'm just going to uh, tie all these together with one of those Wago connectors and I will just tap into the ground wire coming off of the fuse box. I want to make sure when everything gets into the terminals they're using my color scheme which is blue for running, yellow for left turn and I just made these long enough so I can do whatever I need to do. And here's the ones coming up from the back of the bike. These are for the uh, show chrome uh, saddlebag lights and you can see here blue was already the running light but red was the turn signal so I changed that to my colors which is yellow for the turn signal and blue for the running I kept the blue color so now all I've got on this side are yellow and blue all my other lights are going over here on the right side of the bike coming from the trailer coming from the pathfinder brake and tail light I'm using 22 gauge wire for these particular lights. I will also put a link in the description of this video of where you get, I bought this wire from Amazon. There's all different colors. And I'll put a link to that too. I've, I'll put these on my Amazon store. So this is what it looks like on the right side of the bike. Once I have the lever nuts all connected, you can see here all my blue wires are going into this lever nut. Now there's still a couple of terminals open. One of those is going to be used to bring the running light master from the power distribution module. And then here I've got all my reds. I've got two of those open still. And here's all my grounds. Now some of these I tied together and put into one terminal. And then down here I've got my brake light and my uh, left turn signal on that comes through on the right side of the bike because of the way the wiring is on my uh, trailer. 
and on the Pathfinder LED tail light brake light combination. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on the right side of the bike even though it's a left turn signal and a brake light. And now once I've got all of this bundle ready on the right side of the bike, now I'm going to go over here and kind of clean up the rat's nest on the left side of the bike, do the same thing. So here I've got the wires coming from my Showchrome um, isolator fuse block. These are the ones that come from the left, or I should say the left and the right saddlebag connectors. And I've extended all of these wires out. And I will cut these back to be shorter. Right now I just wanted to give myself enough wire to work with. You'll notice I put a female butt connector on the end of the wires on this wire right now. I will end up putting it on all the wires because if I do want to remove this, I don't want to have to cut the wires. And then I have the male connector coming on these. Now these are the wires that come from the show chrome. I've, I've had to cut these back because I had it installed earlier. So now I'm just re-extending these wires out and I'm going to all of these uh, butt connectors are going to kind of go down in this area right here where you can't really see them and they'll be out of the way. Here are my connectors coming from my show chrome on the, on the uh, right side. There's the two buck connectors there. Don't worry about this, I'm not using that anymore. And then down here are my other three that go to the left side. And I've just got these uh, kind of water sealed butt connectors here. Not my favorite connectors, but uh, at least I can remove them if I need to. I could have soldered these in, uh, but I just decided to go ahead and use these butt connectors. And then here is my show chrome unit. You can see I've got all my wires here that are going to come over here to the right side of the motorcycle. I need to point out that the wires I'm referring to right now are the wires coming from the various terminals on the show chrome isolator. And there's one for each circuit. So one will go to the left turn signal, one to the right, one to the brake light, one to the running light, and one to the ground. I've already put a little piece of heat shrink on there just to hold them together. Here are my wires going to the left side of the bike. Another heat shrink. And I'm using a Wago connector here. Uh, basically, this is the left turn signal. I split it to the... Uh, to the left and to the right because I've got a left turn signal coming from my trailer harness over here on the right side and I'm going to use that there. And then all my power hookups which I haven't hooked up yet. I referred to these connectors earlier as butt connectors but they're actually bullet connectors and they provide a pseudo waterproof seal uh, but you can take them apart put them back together in case you need to make some changes I will put a link at the end of the video where you can find these on Amazon I was able to find these small black plastic project boxes on Amazon and they come in a variety of sizes. Now I'll give you links in the description of the video and at the end of the video for the ones that I'm using here. I have two different sizes. One is a little bit larger, one's a little smaller, but they work perfect for holding those Wago connectors. Now one thing I did is I used a little X-Acto knife saw to cut a notch in each of these boxes so that I could fit my wires through. You could of course use a drill. And then I attached a dual lock fastener to the back of each box so that I could attach them to the motorcycle. So here is the finished product for now. Got my uh, saddlebag connectors with my um, harness for my show chrome. And here are the bullet connectors for the show chrome. These are the trigger wires that come from the two saddlebag connectors. So I've just kind of got these tucked up underneath here where they're out of the way. Here are my wires from the right side of the bike and they come down into this box right here. Now I can come in here with some silicone seal if I want to completely waterproof this. Of course here's the show chrome which is also not waterproof 
I wanted to stop the video here for a second and talk a little bit about a lot of comments I get about the Show Chrome Isolator Fuse Block not being weatherproof or waterproof. Now, when I think about it this way, this box sits above the battery. It's under your seat. When you think about the two connectors on your battery, they're not waterproof either. They're not sealed. So if the battery doesn't need to be sealed and waterproof, I don't see why it's so important that this isolator fuse block be waterproof either. Just something to think about. And then all of my wires coming from the right side of the bike are kind of tucked up under the frame rail here, as you can see. And everything is enclosed in heat shrink tubing. Now let's go over to the other side of the bike. I've got a ground wire and some GPS wires sitting up here in one of these little boxes on top of the fuse box, which fits there quite nicely. And I've got another small box. Right now I've got it down here. These are all of my left side rear connectors. I'm sorry, my left side connectors, front and rear, all come to this junction point. And this box can probably fit up here behind this uh, left saddlebag. And I may end up moving it because it is a little low. But again, I can silicone seal around here to get a waterproof uh, seal or, you know, pretty close to waterproof. It's not completely waterproof. This is my uh, cable for my battery tender, which comes out through my side cover. But this fits perfectly in here, even with the side covers on. Everything fits nicely. So, good clean installation. I think is about as good as I get with all the accessories that I have. Remember what my wires looked like before I started this project? It was a rat's nest of wires and Wago connectors going everywhere. It was a mess. After the project is complete, I just took this picture this morning. This is what the bike looks like now underneath the seat. Okay, I took the cover off of this box right here so you can see what's inside that box. These are all of those Wago connectors. And then I've got this one kind of large piece of heat shrink tubing combining all of these into one wrap. And it just kind of fits right there, all color coded. And there are extra openings if I need to add other accessories. You can see there's some open uh, terminals in here. Here are all the tools that I use to complete this project. And I'll have links in the description of this video to my wiring tools page on Amazon.com. If you're going to take on a project like this, you're going to need a good wire stripper. And in my opinion, there's none better than the Irwin Vice Grip wire stripper shown here. It does everything and it really makes stripping wires simple and easy. A good heat gun is also essential for using those little solder connectors to connect wires together and the heat shrink tubing. I recommend a good pair of wire snips for cutting wires back to size. These little heat shrink solder butt connectors are one of the best tools I've found for connecting two wires together. They're easy to use and they provide a waterproof solid connection. I use heat shrink tubing to combine multiple wires together in a uniform and waterproof case. I used a combination of 18 gauge and 22 gauge wire when extending my wires. There are a lot of ways to combine multiple wires on a circuit, but I found these Wago connectors, these lever nuts to be the most reliable and they're simple to use. But there are imitators out there, so make sure you get the Wago brand. These little plastic project boxes from Amazon make a great way to store those Wago connectors out of the way. Well, I hope this video has inspired you to clean up any wiring issues you might have on your own motorcycle. If you liked this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and that little bell icon so YouTube will notify you of new videos when they become available.